Okay, children. So today we are going to begin this new poem by Thomas Hardy. He is a very famous novelist of Victorian era. If you happen to read about English literature, so there are so many different periods, right? And one such period is the Victorian age. He is a very popular novelist of Victorian age. Has produced a variety of novels. and uh, his novels basically highlighted the socio economic condition of the uh, british people not always the higher class but the peasant class and the middle class also what was the living condition of the people who were happened to be you know uh, like witnessing this uh, era and so many rulers have come and gone and the life of these people are very minutely highlighted uh, through his work one such popular work which was there in the uh, syllabus of uh, allahabad university when we were students was uh, tess of the dubeville tess tess is the name of the female protagonist of the novel all right so here we are uh, with a poem written by him only so let me read the beginning part As a young apprentice architect, British poet and novelist Thomas Hardy once visited a parish to supervise the restoration of a church. On his return from the parish, people noticed two things about him. First is a new glow in his eyes. and the next is a crumpled piece of paper sticking out of his coat pocket that paper it is recorded in one of the in one of his biographies what do you mean by biography i have already clarified this concept long ago anybody what do you mean by biography means if sumit will write an account detail of his own life in his own words by himself that will become biography yes ma'am no 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 yes, i'm sorry it's not that will become autobiography auto autobiography right that is so we have a person's life written by someone else. else if i write about sumit the famous nobel laureate and the you know man booker prize winner maybe the future right so that will become biography all right so uh, this crumpled piece of page actually later on became uh, one of his you know a recorded piece of his uh, biographies contained and this paper actually contained the draft of a poem what do you mean by draft something which we have prepared in a rough manner and that later on takes the place of of the well drafted and you know a uh, proper manuscript for the later stage so you are going to read that very poem inspired by a visit to a place which the poet calls lyonies right so in short he he the poet has once set out for a place a rather imaginary place which he fondly addresses as lyonies right so the impact of that place which actually casts a kind of new change in the man himself who is the man here the poet thomas hardy that change which the place has uh you know like a uh, by a simple visit he had gone through a kind of surreal change surreal means you know something which he has never felt before it was it was like very unreal but it happened and not only he was unable he who the poet was unable to identify what was that change but the people who were present outside who were onlookers right they also felt that thing in him so let's begin this poem when i set out for lyonis a hundred miles away the rhyme was on the spray and starlit 
sorry and starlight lit my lonesomeness when i set out for lioness a hundred miles away so the stanza highlights that the poet is planning and he is setting out on a journey which is not very near but it is something like 100 miles is a big distance 100 miles away this place which he calls as lioness he when he is setting out on his journey the rhyme was on the spray rhyme here means rhyme here stands for what rhyme here stands for frost okay and spray means the leaves and branches of trees the foliage right so when he set out for this journey to lioness snow frost can be seen spread it over all the green, uh, green trees bushes fauna flora right and the poet was not lonely traveling in this journey the moonlight the star light lit my lonesomeness lonesomeness addresses the loneliness since he was individual so he is just addressing it like i was not lonely uh, my loneliness was lit by it means it was brightened by the company of the stars and stars are usually in bunches many countless stars were there to accompany him so again the line comes in repetition when i set out for lioness a hundred miles away now comes the next stanza what would be chance at lioness while i should sojourn there no prophet durst declare nor did the wisest wizard guess what would be chance at lioness while i should sojourn there now my children here second stanza has words like bichance bichance means happen ek chance ek chance you know like shayad wo ek chance hi tha jisne poet ko lioness pahuncha diya to jaise kehte na i happen to be present at the wedding i had no plans but i happen to present or i happen to uh, get that chance as uh, my buddy was not present so i was uh, you know invited on his place so the poet happened to be there and it was a chance for him to visit lioness but the effect the place has created on him it was actually not understood by anyone including the poet himself sojourn here means the stay sojourn ko kaha ja raha hai sojourn ka matlab rukna stay karna theek hai is this thing clear yes ma'am so while i should sojourn there no prophet durst declare nor did the wisest wizard guess when he had uh, came back when he had come back from the place after had after his stay from that place no prophet prophet here is addressing to a person who could tell fortune a kind of fortune teller right it means the fortune teller himself was not able to identify that what special thing has happened uh, with this person nor the wisest wizard wizard means a person who does magic right so they 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 both were unable to guess that what has happened right what would be chance at lioness the chance that i got to be and to witness the place uh, what what effect i had uh, received from this place while i stayed there sojourn there means stay there jitne der tak main wahan ruka aur uska jo impact aaya mere par i was not able to know nor does the wizard can guess nor could the prophet dare declare hai na now when i returned from lioness after he has returned there is something different with his personality with magic in my eyes 
all marked with mute surmise. Surmise means there is no guess. People are awestruck. They are, you know, like uh, they, they can notice two changes, two wild changes. Uh, one is like, you know, there was extreme brightness in his eyes. Whose eyes? The poet. There was some sparkle in his eyes, right? And my radiance rare and fathomless. When I return from lioness with magic in my eyes, uh, though it is not mentioned, but actually two things. Uh, the people, when he returned from lioness, people have noticed two things. First is the glow which was beaming right through his eyes. And that's the reason uh, the third stanza, last third line says, my radiance rare and fathomless means the aura i was reflecting i was creating my presence was something different and the effect the place has created it could not be measured fathom fathomless means so deep that it cannot be measured and the spectators were you know like mute surmise they were left muted no no one could expect or guess why it was so the change was easily visible on poets persona personality with you know like magical eyes or maybe the radiance radiance means what a kind of you know sparkle a kind of light which was reflecting from the poet so people could uh, notice the changes but they could not tell the reason behind it okay so that's how the poet has uh, experienced this change by a simple visit to the place called Lyonese. And, uh, you know, when Thomas Hardy has written this note, uh, if you look at the brief description in the introductory lines here, so you can easily find the word parish. Firstly, let me uh, now re let me reread this individual piece of part so that you can make now complete meaning out of it as a young apprentice apprentice is a person who is under training and is receiving the training here after apprentice architect is written now do you guess what is an architect person who designs buildings right correct yes yes so he was a young apprentice architect along with that he was a poet british in nationality and not only that he was a novelist so he once visited a parish what is a parish parish means a small administrative district typically having its own church and a priest district means what say alabar is a district of up yes Yes or no? Yes, so, so parish. Unka jana hua kaha pe ek parish me. Parish ek district hai. District jiska khud ka apna ek church hai. Or us church ka apna ek priest hai. So, he was supervising the restoration of a church. Right? Hari once visited a parish, a district, to supervise the restoration of a church. And this church, this district, is place, ko, is district ko, it is actually, when you look at the word meanings, in Arthurian legend, you know, earlier, it is a mythical birthplace. Mythical yani ki aisa mana jata hai. Hai? Mythical yani ki mythologically. Birthplace of Sir Tristram in England, believed to have been submerged by sea here an imaginary place. So, once upon a time, the birthplace of Sir, uh, of Sir Tristram was happened to be Lyonese, but now it is totally submerged by the sea. It is nowhere. So it is actually an imaginary place, right? And this visit which Hardy made to this place had a special impact on his personality. There was a new glow and a crumpled piece of paper st sticking out of his coat pocket. So that paper was also seen by people, right? And that paper actually had the draft of this. While his stay 
and his you know like what he himself experienced a kind of feeling it usually happens uh, the the central meaning message which we all can decipher from this piece of text of the poem is say whenever we are happen to be at any place either it is our granny's place or we are going on a short trip you have been to museum we accumulate so many good memories or we you know like there is a kind of new feel and new emotion attached whenever we visit to any place and you may never know what kind of influence that place has upon you or maybe your influence on that person who is belonging to that place so it's just like vice versa right have you felt ever like this what do you think traveling has its own you know its own charm its own spell right and it's always believed that traveling to places can be rejuvenating it can refresh you and you can back with energy you know so it's always a good chance to go on a short vacation or to short trips all right so i hope that uh, this poem is clear to all of you and it's the impact of the short visit that the poet thomas hardy has created the draft and the draft was very much seen on that crumpled piece of page that was visible from his pocket coat pocket right so um in the first stanza fine words that show that it was very cold that it was late in the evening that the traveler was alone something happened at lines it was so you can do these questions on your own right and i wish to jump to uh, the next left out portion of the open window am i yes ma'am okay yes, ma okay thank you